So as we're talking about making the same mistakes, we don't want to do that, okay? And that's what residuals do. They help us to determine how different our observed data is from the predicted data. We're looking for errors, so we're looking for the mistake that was made. Okay, so residual plots. Residual plots help us to determine if the data is linear or not. So I made these two examples. And as we look at this one, we see we have a negative slope here. And yes, the line of best fit looks like it's going to be about there. Is it off? Absolutely. Okay, now this is nothing but data, and you've got the scatter plot. Now I want to show you the relationship between a scatter plot and a residual plot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to literally just cross that right there. I am going to erase this. Now, please notice that this was the prediction line. And so now here, ladies and gentlemen, is your residual plot. Now, I should have mentioned before I did the change here, and I'm just going to cover that up for a moment and then draw this line back again. that here is the predicted line. So here's, an observ here's, here's the observation. So here, prediction, the observed. Prediction, the observed. I'm just picking a couple of them. Your prediction, the observed. Your prediction, the observed. So the line is the prediction, here's the observed. Here's the prediction, here's the observed. So you can see all of these um, lines, and all these lines are just talked about the um, the video. No, they're not mistakes, but they're errors. So we're saying that the prediction line is supposed to be accurate, but the reality is, isn't the data we collected the right thing? But we use this prediction line right here, and as I use this prediction line, I am using this to make a prediction about the future. So here's your prediction. Here's the um, here's your observed. So now, as I erase this, and now show you the residual, and it is right there. And you can see how the residual is that vertical distance difference. Here is the observed, and there's the prediction line. So it's like the prediction line becomes the new horizontal. So when I say to you that there's no curve, look how scattered those points are. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this. I have this residual, I'm sorry, I have this scatter plot, and then I have this curve looks something like that. So we can see, obviously, that's not linear. But we could force ourselves to have a line of best fit, and our line of best fit is going to look something like this. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to make myself a residual plot. Now, look what happens. This thing is not scattered. This thing looks kind of parabolic, doesn't it? Now, we don't say it looks parabolic. They don't like that on the AP test, but we know it is. Um, but we do say is that it is not, it is curved, and because it's curved, this is not a line. Okay, so not a linear pattern. So this is just reiterating something I said earlier today in class. So the next thing I want you to do is to read this question and enter this data into your calculator. Now once you've entered it, we're about to fill out this chart, find the equation of a line. And as you find the equation of a line, this is what you found. Remember we talked about earlier, you have to make sure to define it. So here where y hat is the predicted height of the men and where x is the height of the men. Okay, I've color coded the men and the women. Yeah, don't judge me on the color differentials. Um, but I did that to help us with um, what we're about to find. Now please notice 
if you have the observed values there, ignore them or white them out. You're going to put them back in, so I don't know if you really want to white it out. So next thing I need to do is find a predictive value. So here, how do you do find a predictive value when you were in math 3? Well, what you did was you took your values of x and you plug them in to that equation, which is what I did right here, and here is your answer. The next one, I have my value of x, I plug it into the equation, and here is the answer. As I put this in context, here, here's the equation that represents um, represents the data that I have in which I'm going to plug in the height of the female to be 66 and with that being said it is predicted that the male height is going to be 68.8 that's the prediction notice that what I have right here at the 66 that's the observed but if we use the prediction line that is what is predicted Now let's remind ourselves of what we do. We put, I'm putting it in my L1 and my L2. I'm going to go to stat, calc, down, linear regression. I've got it in my L1 and L2. Just keep going down and then calculate. Here's my equation of a line. I need you to recognize the rounding that we did right here. Here's the equation and look at our excessive rounding. Why am I mentioning that? Because when we do our math, our residual values are going to be off immensely. And we will see that in a minute. Now, this is the picture of our scatter plot. And you can see what it represents as you um, press the trace. Here, this is when the women is 66 um, inches and the men um, 72. I want to show you something I haven't shown, didn't show anybody in the classes, because I'm about to have the calculator do the line of best fit. So, first of all, I need to go into my y equals. And I need to be here because I'm about to have it, to have it paste that equation in. Okay, so I'm going to go to VARS, down to STAT, press ENTER, go over to EQUATION, press ENTER, and look what happens. It cut and pasted that equation into, the, um, into, this, um, into this place, into this um, y equals the y sub 1 equals and then now I'm going to graph it and look the line of best fit was drawn so you may have to rewind that to come up with that a couple of times if you because see what happens is as we're looking at this data I can guarantee you this stuff is going to be off big time we found that out in first period well second period I should say it's going to be off big time so this is how you can work around it Matter of fact, let's check it out now. So let's go to our stat here, and then my L3. I'm going to paste that equation in again. So remember, I'm going to VARS down to statistics, press enter, go over to equation, press enter. And there's that long equation right there, and I'm pressing enter again. What type of error did you make? You probably didn't like it. Oh, I know where the error lies. Here it says the value of x. But what I need to do is instead of saying x, because there is no x right there, I need to insert L1. So second insert my L1. And that x has got to go, so I'm just going to press delete. And then if I press enter, here are the values. And as I look at these values, look how different they look from what I have or what we calculated. This one's exactly 69, this is 68.8. This one's 67.52 um, and the calculator is 67.63. Okay, I don't know your thoughts are, well, is that going to really be a big deal? Yeah, it will be when we're doing our residual. So the next thing I need to do is to find the, re the residual. And if the residual is the observed minus the predicted, I am now going to write in what my observed values are. So here that is 72 for the men, 68. Okay, so those are the, the values. 
And now what I'm going to do is do the math. Now I'm going to do the math based on these rounded values. We already know that there's a rounding error based on this right here. So when we found it, the res those are the residual values. And this is when we did it by hand. As we continue doing things by hand, let's make our residual plot. So as I make my residual plot, recognize here I'm going as high as 3 and as low as a negative 3 based on these residual values that I have here. I know I could have gone taller, but yeah, not that. I don't have to worry about it. These values right here are our x values, which represent our women. So I have these in numerical order. And here, as I look at the score for this is the woman that is 66, so 66 which is this first one. The residual is 3.12. Okay. Next, when I have the um, female that's 64 is 64, here's the residual value right here, 0.48. Next, I have the um, female height to be um, 66, which is the one right here. The residual is 1.12. Here, 65, 65 right here. Where to go? Where to go? Let's look at that value. Notice that the residual slightly under. It's right there if you missed it. Okay, here when I'm looking at the women's height to be 70, which is here, you can see the residual. And then when the women's height is 65, here, here is the residual. So that's how we do a residual by hand. And that was kind of painful. So now let's do it with the calculator. So now let's take our L3. And I want to move my L3 to my L4. So I'm clearing my L4. And I'm going to tell it my L3 equals my L4. Or I should say my L4 equals my L3. So here I'm matching that list because I never know if I'm going to need it. So now I'm going to clear my L3. And what I'm about to do is have the calculator do a resid. Oh, but wait for it. I didn't tell it to find the resid yet. So as I have the calculator find the resid, first thing I need to make sure is that I had it find the equation of a line, which I did. But let's go back. Here, this is because it's been a while. So I've got stats. Go to calc. Down here to um, 4. All my lists are OK. And there's my equation of a line. Next, what I'm going to do is have it to find the residuals in two ways. So the first thing I'm going to do is have it find it on the chart. So here, edit. And then I'm going to go over to my L3. And on my L3, I'm going to say, OK, I want my residual values to be here instead of us doing it by hand like we did. Now, how do I find the residuals? OK, I go second list. Okay, so I'm press, I need to get to that list right there. So second stat, so to get to list. Second stat, second list, whichever way you want to think about it. And then I see the word resid. Please remember, if your word does not pop up, that's because you did not find the equation of a line um, at first. Okay, so here I've got enter. So now it's telling me L3 is going to find the resid. And here are all the resid values. Now notice how ours is slightly off because we already established that. This was by hand. This is by calculator. So this is 3. Okay. This is more accurate than our by hand. This is, um, we found the resid for the second one. Our by hand is 0.48. Here is 0.36. Here by hand is 1.12. Calculator is 0.1. I mean, excuse me, not 0.1. It's a 1. So please remember, we have to do, um, well, the one that's more accurate is the calculator. Now I want to say some, show you something that I mentioned a couple seconds ago. Now what I mentioned a couple seconds ago is that the word resid will not pop up if you do not tell it or do not have the calculator um, find the equation of the line first. So I want you guys to look at this calculator. This is a brand new calculator. No one's ever entered anything in this calculator. Notice there's no L1, no data in your L1 and L2. So let's try to find a resid. Telling you this will not work, but conf let's confirm. So I'm going to go to second list. What do you see there? Oh, 
you don't see the word resent. Why? There was nothing in your list, nor had you asked it to write the equation. So now as I go back to the other calculator, it showed resent simply because, remember, we had it find the equation. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So now let's go back to my um, stat edit. Let's look at all these re residual values right here. Okay, so this is another way of doing it with the calculator. We did it by hand, and we'll never do it by hand again, at least I won't. Um, let's learn how to use the calculator and do it that way. Oh, forgot to show you. How do I do the residual in the calculator? So here, I'm going to go to my stat plot. I've got it on. Now, my residual values... My L1 is my x-axis, and let's notice here, my L1 is going to stay my horizontal. It's going to stay my horizontal. So, remember I said to you earlier as I try to get out of the light that your, oh, that made it worse, maybe better, that the residual value is nothing, the residual plot, excuse me, is nothing but a, um, a type of scatter plot. So, I've got it on scatter plot here. I'm just going to keep moving. And here, notice that my L1 is going to stay the same. The horizontal is going to stay the same. What's going to change is my L2. What I've got to do is take this word, take this, and replace it for the word resid. So here, second list, go down to the word resid, and it cuts and pastes it in there. And I'm going to zoom stat. And here is my residual plot. And I know your thoughts are, well, that looks like a scatter plot with a horizontal line through it. Exactly. You know that that's basically your T is here that you can't see it. This value right here is the horizontal, which is your zero. And then you can press, the, press trace. Oh, let's see what's happening. That point right there, when you have the resid, when you have the um, women's to be um, 66 inches, look at your residual values, three. Let's look at what we have here. Remember, we already established that there was a rounding error in here when we did it by hand. And you can just keep pressing trace as you move along. So, we talked about a lot of things in this video. We talked about how to do a residual plot by hand. We talked about how to do it with the calculator. We talked about what a residual plot is. And remember, the whole idea behind a residual plot is that as I have a bunch of data, is it linear? And we look at the residual plot to look for scatteredness because if it is scattered, that is, it, a linear model will be okay. If it's not, no bueno. Okay, so, and I know it says two things here, but the other one was in your notes. And remember we said the idea of we got to look at the vertical axis um, to help us determine um, if, it, if it's the best residual plot for that particular data. Okay, so, a lot of information. You're going to be rewinding this for, more, for a while so that you can learn how to do things in the calculator. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye.